All right, and here we are. Um, the next talk is going to be about maximizing wireless performance in the 60 gigahertz band. Please welcome to the stage Mark Yapubicek, SDM Microelectronics. Wireless engineers worldwide are, are uh, f tirelessly fine-tuning their source codes to achieve the highest data throughput and lowest power consumption. But once the energy leaves the digital form and it's transmitted or it's broadcasted uh, via, via an antenna, then the energy is not treated with the same effort as it should be. Hello, my name is Marek. I'm an application engineer in ST Microelectronics, and today I will do my best to show you that respecting a few RF and hardware-related uh, related aspects and principles can help you to avoid some common mistakes and speed up your developing process. To do so, I will help, my se help myself with that design example. It's a, it's a wireless point-to-point -point, uh, communication, uh, communication link or wireless link that is uh, that is designed for 10 millimeters, uh, 10 millimeters distance, working on 60 gigahertz uh, data or 60 gigahertz frequency band. <coughs> Today, I will go through uh, four four aspects or four four topics. Firstly, I will remind you how to deal with uh, wireless link uh, wireless link budget uh, parameters. Then. I will show you some, some typical methods how material can be characterized. Then I will very briefly go into theory about, theory about uh, wave propagation. And I, also, uh, I will also uh, comment on a few aspects that are affecting uh, wireless performance. <coughs> if we are designing wireless link, we actually have to know the power levels and and to know whether these energy levels are enough for establishing, uh, establishing the link. So, <coughs> so when once we, sh we, we discover these energy levels across the distance, the initial, initial level, uh, power level, is given by the transmitter itself. Uh, oops. Then part of the energy is, uh, is every time uh, lost by, uh, by uh, uh, transmitting, lines, transmitting lines or cables. But thankfully, there is an antenna gain that will help us to increase the, the power level a bit. Please, in this case, uh, keep in mind that antenna, as it is, is just a passive component. Gain, in this case, it's not the same gain as is in uh, amplifiers. So antenna gain is just about focusing the energy into one direction. So maybe I will tell it uh, one more time. Antenna as it is ju is just a passive component. Once the energy leaves the, leaves the antenna or leaves the PCB, it's, it's uh, transmitted into the air. And in that case, we are losing most of the energy. It's, uh, it's dependent not just on distance. It's quite natural that with distance, we lose a lot, of, a lot of energy. But it's also dependent on the frequency. That's the reason why we, don't, uh, we, we cannot uh, achieve the higher distances or very high distances with high frequencies. Uh, in, in case of 60 gigahertz, it's even worse, because maybe you might know that there is an atmospheric anomaly where oxygen molecules really interact with 60 gigahertz band. So that's something what we have to put, put into calculation as well. Uh, but back into the free space, uh, it's good to remember that every time we double the distance of the link, the power level is decreased by 6 dB, 6 de decibels. At the receiver time, the situation is quite similar. 
Again, and then again will help us to increase the power level a bit. And then after subtracting few decibels uh, due to cable or uh, mismatch losses, we got the energy level or the power level uh, that is received at the receiver side. After that, we just can evaluate whether this level is enough for the wireless link to be established or not. That was quite easy, right? But what if I put something between the links or between the antennas? Why would, why would I do that? Well, basically, eventually every RF link is housed or it's, it's uh, packed in some housing or casing. So we just put a pl place, uh, we, we just put a sheet of some plastic into the link. Imagine the situation that from some product manage management or product manager gave us the situation that we have to use a plastic, in this case ABS, with some, uh, let's, say, uh, let's say that uh, it must be placed in certain, uh, certain distance from the antenna. But we were so lucky as uh, RF engineers that we can choose the correct thickness of these, uh, of, of, the, uh, of the sheet or of the plastic. We are quite lucky. They gave us some freedom to cho choose uh, thickness between one to two millimeters. Luckily, we have uh, simulation tools or simulation softwares. So we just put this piece or this uh, sheet of the plastic into that simulation software and we can evaluate whether this plastic or this ABS have some, uh, have some, or have some impact into 60 gigahertz frequency. One of the most popular method is to using a waveguide. Waveguide is basically just a cavity, a metal cavity. It can be with, with a with uh, air inside or with some plastic. And it's quite popular in, uh, in uh, simulation softwares because computation is very quick. Okay, so we went through, we went through few, uh, few values of thickness and we can find the ideal thickness. In this case, what value or what parameters we are, we are monitoring? Basically, it's a reflection because we are really looking for the thickness that doesn't impact the 60 gig gigahertz or the, the excited, excited uh, frequency. So once the reflected energy is the minimal, we can say that it doesn't impact, impact the link so much. The other parameter is forward trans transmission. In this case, we can also say that once all the energy is transmitted in that intended way, it means that the thickness of the, of the plastic didn't impact the 60 gigahertz. Quite often, just reflection is, oops, wait a minute just uh, reflection is monitored because, or if, if, you, if you prefer S11 if there are some wireless engines here. Because once we see the reflection or S11, it makes really nice peaks in the graphs. And it's, it's really useful for many techniques because one, uh, quite often you can, you can just optimize these uh, these values or these data, because once, once the results are really significant, then you can easily, uh, easily find the right uh, solution or right, uh, right uh, values. In this case, we were quite lucky. As I said, our limits were between one and two millimeters. Best values in this case are 
two millimeters. Amazing, we are there. And our work is done. Well, no, it's not. The thing is that in, in a waveguide, the wave itself has a differs, or the, the wavelength differs from the, from the wave in a free space. That means that we were fine-tuning the thickness, but for, uh, for a really different, different frequency. So, okay, we fine-tune it, but the frequency is, is, uh, is not 60 gigahertz. Actually, it's a lower frequency. But at least we found out, or we learned, that it's good to, good to monitor reflection itself. Because, as I said, it makes some nice peaks, and we can significantly see the difference. So we are getting back to free space. In this case, 60 gigahertz antenna is used, and the sheet of the plastic is placed in front of the antenna. We learn that it's enough to see or to monitor the re reflection itself. So we do so. And after a few iterations, we found that the best, best reflection, and just uh, for minus uh, 48 db, dB, that means that less than 0.01% one, one, uh, is reflected back. So we find the new, the new value. It's not two millimeters anymore. There are just 1.5 millimeters. We are in free space. So we finally found the, the ideal thickness for that. Well, also, it's not the correct value. Allow me some comment here. I assumed, er, or I also mentioned, that once the all energy is transmitted in that direction, and just remaining energy is reflected back, it means that when almost no energy is reflected, it must be just transmitted in that intended way, correct? But it's not true. For example, we completely ignored that some of the energy is not, it's not broadcasted in the in in intended way, but also in completely different directions. And we, because we, what we did, we changed, or we probably changed, the radiation pattern of the antenna. And we have absolutely no control whether, whether these radiation patterns or radiation parameters are not changed once we are changing or fine-tuning the thickness of that. The second thing is that part of the energy is just transformed into heat. And it's also something what we cannot monitor. We are just monitoring the energy here where the reflection affects or uh, appears. And this this aspects so then completely ignored and we could s we could just say that okay in this case on this thickness that's the ideal material but we ignored all the all along the th third thing is about the placement of the sheet itself if i may ask you could you please raise your hand if you ever heard about the uh, far field or near field? Amazing, amazing. <laughs> so what, what, I what did I did do? What did I do? I just placed, placed the sheet in completely random distance in front of the antenna. And then I tried to evaluate the thickness or evaluate, evaluate the material characterization. Actually, what happens in a near field region? In near field region, we have absolutely no control what's happening with the waveform. There is completely chaos there. 
Yeah, or completely. <laughs> but I can say that for these small antennas, the border between near and far field is free lambda, free wavelengths. And for 60 gigahertz, it's around 15 millimeters. But, but I said that the sheet, or the, yeah, the plastic sheet, it's placed just in front of the antenna, really in the near field. So what we did in near field, everything, wo everything what we place in the near field is still part of the antenna. So we cannot just separate it and, and put, put somewhere else. We are characterizing, maybe we are characterizing the material, but not for this case, because, because uh, the sheet itself is really in front of the antenna. You might say that I'm just a troublemaker. Why didn't, why didn't I just put everything into the, into the simulator or into the simulation tool? and let it, let it go through a few, few simulation runs, and then the results would be, the results would be clear and, and nice. You might be right. It would take incredible amount of, of uh, computing time, but let's do that. And again, after a few runs, I can say, say that now the ideal thickness of this plastic is not 1.5 millimeters anymore, but 1.4. It's, so, it's not so far, right? Well, it's not. But what if, uh, what if I tell you that I just assume at, at the beginning that the di uh, dielectric constant or permittivity, if you prefer, I said that it's 2.3, but I didn't comment how that value was given or wh where, 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 where did we, f we find it. Just somebody told us that it's 2.4, 2.3. But I don't think that there was anybody who tried to characterize this material and this completely random ABS for 60 gigahertz. It's once, once it's uh, characterized, it's, it could be for one gigahertz or even less. But we have absolutely no control what, what happens on 60 gigahertz because the inner structure could be really reacting or interfering with the 60 gigahertz itself. Yeah, so I, my message is that I, I just spent enormous time to fine tune something with completely, completely random, completely random values. Other thing I al already mentioned, it's not just, just the plastic itself that is in the near field, but also the the second point or the, the second end because we are setting we are setting the wireless link for 10 millimeters but near field for that antenna or, or I mean uh, far field for that antenna is 15 millimeters so again we cannot just separate the sheet or separate the plastic and let it Compute, let it simulating somewhere, somewhere else. And in this case, it's even worse because it's not just about endpoints and the plastic itself, but also the cavity or the gap between between two plastics is interacting, and it's influencing the results. Another thing that is it wasn't mentioned and has to be characterized is that 
the material itself, itself in the real world is really dependent on the polarization. Because w for 60 gigahertz, the, the inner structure is such an unknown thing for us that we cannot just, just uh, anticipate that everything is set up, uh, that, that uh, all, all inner, inner structure is, uh, is homogeneous. But unfortunately, there's, there's something we cannot simulate, at least not easily. To conclude this session, my goal wasn't to, sh to say that it's impossible to simulate these things. I combined many troubles, many aspects together on purpose, because at the, at the beginning, it looked like, OK, there are no, prob no troubles, just two endpoints, some plastic sheet, and that's it. But it, with in, when I combine all these troubles together, I just wanted to, to show you that the simulation tools, they will give us some, they will give us some, uh, uh, some results. But the tricky part is to know whether these results are valuable or not. It's about interpretation on the, of the results. What can we do with that? Of course, we could just educate ourselves, and we can, or we can, we can uh, use uh, services of our application engineers. Thank you very much. I hope you will you will uh, you will visit us at our booth for a in yeah in in hall for a <laughs> thank you for your attention thank you very much mr kubicek we have some time for questions if there are any So you mentioned that um, I'm, we obviously can simulate within bounds some things, right? If I'm doing a 60 gigahertz radar, then I'm going to you know, have an opening in my, my cache because I know that this is going to be a problem. So does ST actually offer um, simulatable models of their on-chip or in-package antennas? Is that something that we can actually get? Uh, well, not yet. Something is under NDA. Once yeah. you are our customer, we can we can uh, we can uh, uh, provide some models, but not o of the inner structure. I was I was uh, showing the, the the example with inner structure, but once once <laughs> once uh, I, I was I was getting a bit excited there because yes, that's that's what we want to have. <laughs> yeah, but but still, some uh, some models could be available, but just for external antenna. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Maybe if there is no other question, or is there? I just prepared one for you. I skip it on purpose. But could somebody of you tell me why this this level is higher than uh, than the the level? we have on a transmitter side. Because this is one of the pictures you could see quite everywhere. But is that even possible? As I said, antenna is a passive component. So we are, we are, we are having some, some uh, level of, of power. But it, it here it's even higher. So we can prepare to mobile, maybe? No. It's also related with the with the uh, far field things, because this value, it's not, it's not uh, reached at this distance, at distance zero, but in some distance. So, yeah, sorry, sorry, I'm not gonna skip, skip back, but, but just the, the gain itself, it's reached at the distance of far field. So it's not in this, in this point, but somewhere here. 
That's the reason. <laughs> yeah, directing. <laughs> thank you very much again. Let's thank our um, speaker again. Thank you. Thank you very much.